What do these two things have in common? Let's just say we're going butternut for our next state. Welcome back to the United States of Trees, Volume 2, where I'm taking the wood from an interesting and unique native tree for each state and using it to build a map. And up today, it's the great state of Wisconsin, which I'm making out of a piece of wood from the butternut tree, Juglan cenaria. A member of the walnut family, this is a really fascinating tree I can't wait to tell you more about. Especially since back on the map of official state trees, Wisconsin was one of four states that was made out of sugar maple. All right, back to the butternut tree tree and I can hear you saying right now, but Justin, you were holding up a butternut squash at the beginning of this video. Am I to believe those grow on a tree, thereby discrediting everything I've ever learned about squash horticulture? Well, rest assured, your squash horticulture is going to remain unchanged because while these two may share a name, and in just a few minutes I'm going to be cutting into that butternut squash to make a brown butter butternut butternut loaf, the squash and the tree are otherwise completely unrelated. Sometimes called the white walnut, the butternut is a medium to large sized tree native to the northeastern U.S. where it prefers cooler climates and middle elevations, growing best on stream banks and well-drained soils. It's a slow-growing and relatively short-lived species, rarely living longer than 75 years. Its leaves are distinct, 16 to 28 inches long, with 11 to 17 leaflets, each of which grow to about 2 to 4 inches. As a member of the walnut family, its most distinguishing feature are its edible nuts. More oval-shaped than its cousins, the common walnut and black walnut, they also differ in flavor from those two more commonly consumed species. Less bitter than the common walnut and less distinct and earthy than the black walnut, the butternut is more mild and, well, buttery. So why aren't you seeing a bunch of butternuts for sale at your local market? Well, for one, and you'll see this here in a minute, butternuts are much, much harder to shell than the common walnut. Also, like the black walnut, they're not domesticated and thus are only harvested as a wild crop. And good news for us, I was able to buy some online from someone who harvests from trees on their property, so let's get to cracking. Now, even just pulling these things out of the bag, it was immediately clear that they are hard as a rock. I read online that hammering them lengthwise like this was your best bet to get clean chunks of nut meat out of them, and even then, it took quite a bit of practice to get just halfway decent pieces out of there, but I can attest it was worth the effort. These things are really tasty. They've also got this really cool flat winged-like shape that I really dig. So now that I've got a bowl full of these, I'm going to toast them up and get to chopping because I think they're going to be perfect to combine with that other butter or not, you, you know, the squashy one, to make a nice fall flavored bread loaf. But first, let's head to the garage, grab some more butternut wood, and use it to carve a special mixing spoon to help us make that loaf. And while I do that, let's talk about some more uses of the butternut tree. Now, of course, its nuts are its most prominent use. They're prized by many indigenous tribes within its range, and aside from simply harvesting and eating them, they can also be used to make a butter-like oil for a variety of cooking applications. But it's not all about the nut with this tree. Butternut wood is also highly prized. It's soft and lightweight and revered by wood carvers in particular, but it's also used to make all sorts of stuff, from boxes to furniture to veneer and more but yeah it's hand carving where this stuff really shines and i can definitely see why while making this spoon i mean it just cuts well i'm buttery smooth now, sadly, we can't talk about the butternut tree without also talking about the massive decline it's experiencing as a result of butternut canker. It's a disease that's caused by a specific fungal infection, and it first entered the U.S. in the early 1900s when it arrived on imported nursery trees of another species of walnut, Juglans elantifolia, or the Japanese walnut. Cankers form in the lower crown of the tree, killing branches and stems, and diseased trees usually die within just a handful of years. It spreads best in dense forests and in some areas 90% of butternut trees have been killed. The best defense found so far has been to hybridize the butternut tree with the Japanese walnut tree. This hybrid, commonly called a bwartnut tree, inherits a resistance to the disease and researchers are attempting to further hybridize these bwartnuts to inherit more butternut characteristics while also retaining the disease resistance. So send those researchers some great vibes and keep your fingers crossed. 
Okay, so our special mix and spoon is all done and looking pretty fun if you ask me. Now the idea here was to make something kind of like a Danish dough whisk for recipes where you want to lightly mix something together without really working up the gluten too much. So we've got butternut nuts, we've got butternut squash, and I'll be perfectly honest, I cannot wait for this. We are making a browned butter butternut butternut loaf. First up is to make a butternut squash puree. Now you can either cut this thing straight down the middle, clean out the seeds and pulp, and just bake the whole thing until it's fork soft. But I was in a bit of a hurry, so I tried the method where you peel and cube it first in the hopes that it would roast up faster. Either way, just blot with some butter, sprinkle with sugar, and put into a 400 degree oven for 40 minutes to an hour, or until you can easily pierce with a fork. Then into a food processor until pureed. And if you want to skip this step, feel free to use one 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree. Time to add our spices and listen, I love my fall spices, so I'm gonna go absolutely ham here, but feel free to exclude any of these as you see fit. One teaspoon salt, one and a half teaspoon cinnamon, quarter teaspoon each of nutmeg, cardamom, and ginger, an eighth teaspoon of cloves and allspice, and an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper, which is a favorite of mine to add to these fall spice mixes. Mix until fully incorporated, all while basking in that spicy autumnal aroma. Now, one of my favorite activities, let's brown some butter. Toss a half cup of butter, preferably a good European style, into a saucepan and let it melt, swirling and or stirring once it starts to get nice and bubbly. Soon the milk fats will separate and start toasting, but they can burn really fast, so make sure to keep it moving and pull off the heat as soon as they get brown and toasty. Don't let them get burnt. All right, we'll let that cool off a bit and return to our spiced butternut squash puree, where we're going to add a packed cup of brown sugar and a cup of granulated sugar. Add the cooled but still melted brown butter, making sure to scrape all those good bits in there. Add about a quarter cup or less of oil, and then add four ounces of cream cheese cut into small pieces. Mix it together until fully combined. Now there will still be visible chunks of cream cheese at this stage, but that's fine. We're gonna let it sit and rest for a few minutes and then whisk vigorously until there are no more visible chunks of cream cheese remaining. The metal whisk is still definitely the best tool for this job, but don't worry, our butternut spoon is coming real soon. Next up, add four large eggs that you've whisked together with buttermilk, cream, milk, or even just water, and mix into the batter until fully combined. Now add the dry ingredients, which is just a combination of two cups all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons baking powder, and a half teaspoon baking soda, and fold that into the wet ingredients, and this is where our butternut spoon shines through. Keep on a folding until it's fully combined and no visible dry streaks of flour remain. Clumps are A-OK. -okay. Look at that mix and spoon fold. Tremendous. Now let's mix in our roasted and chopped butternuts. Uh, if you're making this at home, feel free to use any nut that you'd like, walnuts, pecans, or just skip the nuts altogether. I'm not your dad. Pour the batter into two greased eight inch loaf pans lined with some parchment paper. I like to cut it long with lifting edges like this. Now to make a simple topping by mixing five packed tablespoons of brown sugar, a tablespoon each of flour and soft and unsalted butter, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and an eighth teaspoon of salt. Mix those together with your fingies until it resembles wet sand, and then sprinkle that goodness on top of those loaves. Into a 350 degree oven for 45 to 50 minutes or until a skewer inserted to the center comes out clean with just a few crumbs attached. While it bakes, let's get back down to the garage to finish up the state, uh, Wisconsin is looking really excellent. The butternut is an amazing and fascinating tree, and if you live in its native range, you should definitely go seek some out and give that tree some love. Especially if you're in Wisconsin where butternut canker is reportedly spreading rapidly. Special thanks to Valerie Ship, who sent me some butternut wood that was salvaged from a tree killed by the disease. But before we add it to the board, the bread is done and out of the oven. I let it cool in the pans on a wire rack for about 20 minutes and then remove moved and let cool further for at least another hour. It smells so good, let's slice this thing open and look at this. They said it couldn't be done and look at us now. Browned butter, butternut, butternut loaf. <laughs> let's give this thing a taste. Mm. Wow. Butternut-alicious, wow, 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 wow. The actual butternuts are so good. Uh, it's like a more buttery walnut, what's not to love. The butternut squash adds like a sweet pumpkin-y base to it. This is like, this is fall right here. This is just fall. I might accidentally eat this whole thing. Make a version of this like right now, I'm telling you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Woo. And the only thing left to do now is get Wisconsin on the board where it is looking so, so good. Also, that's now two very different walnut woods on the board, and I find that to be really fun. That's it for this one. Let me know in the comments if you've ever tried a butternut nut, and definitely let me know if you try this recipe out. I'd love to hear what you all think. And as always, let me know what state or tree you'd like to see next.